Today I'll be reviewing some information on human papillomavirus, otherwise known as HPV. The human papillomavirus is one of the most common sexually transmitted infections in the world. At any given time, it is affecting about 10% of women with normal cytology, meaning women with normal healthy cells. Because HPV is an STI, it is commonly transmitted through sexual activity. This includes skin-to-skin -skin contact of the genital areas, which can occur through vaginal intercourse or anal sex, as well as oral-to-skin contact, so oral sex. So what exactly happens if you get infected with HPV? Oftentimes, the infection will be asymptomatic, meaning that it will show no symptoms. And in most cases, your body's immune system will clear HPV within three years of infection. In some cases, HPV can lead to abnormal cell growth in your genital area, producing genital warts. Here's an actual image. It's not so pretty. Fortunately, these warts are usually benign. In other words, they are not cancerous. But in some cases, the abnormal growth of cells caused by HPV can lead to cervical cancer. This is the second most common cancer in women. Globally, it affects almost half a million women per year, and it kills over 250,000 of these women. This image is showing a front view of the female reproductive system. As you can see, the cervix, where cervical cancer occurs, is located at the base of the uterus. It provides an opening from the vaginal canal for sperm and menstrual fluid to pass and enter the uterus. In the image on the right, abnormal growths have formed on this opening. This consists of cancerous tissue. Not only is HPV present in nearly all of women who have cervical cancer, but it is also present in many cancers of the vagina, the anus, the vulva, penis, and even the head and neck. In other words, being infected with HPV can have negative consequences on men as well. There are at least 120 known types of HPV. 15 of these are considered high-risk types of HPV, as they are more associated with developing cervical cancer. Two types in, in specific, HPV 16 and 18, are present in 70% of women with cervical cancer. For this reason, a lot of research on human papillomavirus is focused on these two types. Now, you're probably wondering how this virus can cause your cells to grow abnormally. When HPV is first transmitted to a new person, it will find a, mean, find a means of entering the skin cells. Within these cells, HPV will insert its viral DNA into the cell's nucleus. Normally, the nucleus regulates the production of human proteins, but once, once HPV's DNA is present in the nucleus, viral HPV proteins will also be produced by skin cells. In order to prevent cancerous tumors from forming, your cells produce tumor suppressor proteins to control cell growth. HPV proteins act on tumor suppressor proteins and prevent them from regulating cell growth. This causes skin cells to multiply at an uncontrolled rate, forming abnormal growths like the wart in this diagram. Now, the cells at the surface of your skin are continuously being shed and replaced by cells from the lower layers of your skin. When infected cells are shed, the virus is released, and sexual activity can spread HPV from the infected individual to his or her sexual partner. So how does HPV cause cervical cancer? I mentioned earlier that the immune system often clears HPV infection within three years. This is true of 90% of cases. However, if the HPV infection is not detected by the immune response and persists, cells can begin to replicate abnormally and form CINs, which stands for cervical intraepithelial neoplasms. This is simply a scientific term for abnormal skin cells of the cervix. In this image, we can see how CINs can progress into cervical cancer. Less than 1% of HPV infections actually reach this stage, but given how many women are infected with the virus, this number is still a cause for significant concern. It's important to know how you can protect yourself from HPV infection and cervical cancer. There are several factors which can put you at greater risk for HPV infection. Because HPV is sexually transmitted, 
your chances of getting the virus increase as the number of people with whom you are sexually active increases. The same goes for men, so having a male partner who has had many sexual partners also puts you at greater risk of being infected with HPV. Research has also shown that having a history of chlamydia infections or being HIV positive increases your risk for HPV infection, as does long-term oral contraceptive use, so being on a birth control pill for over five years. To make sure that your cervix is healthy, it is important for sexually active women to get regular pap tests. In a pap test, a tool called a speculum is used to open the vaginal canal so that a swab of cells from your cervix can be collected. The test looks for any abnormal cells, in other words, CIN caused by HPV. This allows us to detect and remove abnormal cells before they progress to cervical cancer. In Ontario, it is recommended that women begin getting pap tests at age 21 if they have begun sexual activity. They should continue to be tested every three years until age 70, at which point you no longer need regular pap tests if your cells have been normal for the past 10 years. To prevent HPV infection, there are two vaccines on the market, one of which is shown here and is called Gardasil. The vaccine cannot eliminate pre-existing infection, so it is targeted towards women aged 29 to 26 who are less likely to have already acquired HPV. The vaccine has also been approved for use in men. In Ontario, it is offered by the Ministry of Health to girls in grade 8. Gardasil protects against four types of high-risk HPV, including types 16 and 18, which as I mentioned earlier are present in 70% of cases of cervical cancer. After receiving your first injection of Gardasil, you will receive a second injection two months later and a third injection six months after your first one. In a nutshell, the vaccine works to prevent HPV infection by stimulating your immune system to produce Y-shaped proteins called antibodies. Once you become exposed to HPV, these antibodies will recognize the virus and attack it, clearing it from your body. So that concludes my presentation on human papillomavirus. If you're interested in learning more, here are a few relevant links. If you prefer learning through videos, this one is informative and easy to follow. And that's it. Hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.